Welcome to Streptococcal Infections. This should be something that almost all of us are familiar with as we or our children have definitely or most likely have had a strep infection in their lifetime. So it's kind of interesting to learn about how strep spreads and some of the other diseases that it can cause. So the etiology of it. Well, first of all, the definition of etiology is the cause or origin of the disease. As you'll see moving forward, as we talk about these different diseases, we'll always have an etiology section. Where does it come from? What does it do? So first of all, Streptococcus is a type of gram-positive bacteria, which means it stains deep violet when you look at it under the microscope. Coccus means round or circle. Streptococcus pyogenes is the one that we're most familiar with that causes a pharyngitis, scarlet fever, and fatigo, otitis media, sinusitis, septic arthritis, and neonatal septicemia. So that is the one that gives you that horatious sore throat that um, sends a lot of people to the urgent care um, with their children. There are virulent, virulent stains, sorry, virulent stains of strep pyogenes, which cause a necrotizing fasciitis, um, which you may have heard of flesh-eating bacteria. This can cause a very serious wound and lead to um, toxic shock and sepsis, which would look similar to what you see in this picture in the bottom right-hand corner. Here's a picture of that gram-positive cocci that I mentioned up in the top right-hand side. They're little balls that are dark purple. Uh, they're divided into serial groups A through O on the basis of their immunological interaction with the cell wall carbohydrate. Strep pyogenes is type A and the most frequently associated with human infection. There are two antigens, an R antigen and an M antigen. The M is the major virulence factor. Strains of strep pyogenes that lack the M antigen cannot cause infection. The M protein is actually able to inhibit phagocytosis. We have some extracellular products with the strep pyogenes. They produce, number one, streptolysin O. This is an enzyme that will bind to a component in the RBC membrane causing rearrangement, which produces holes in the membrane. The hemoglobin will diffuse out of the holes and it will cause the cell to collapse. In an antigenic and antibody response, ASO, which is a type of antistreptolysin O, will be an indicator of recent strep infection. My students always memorize that streptolysin O looks like a hole, which produces the hole in the membrane, just the O itself. Streptolysin S is responsible for beta hemolysis on the surface of a blood agar plate. I have a picture on the next slide. It's a clear appearing area. Hemolysis and streptolysin S kind of sound the same, so hemolysis and S go together. It disrupts the selective permeability of the RBC membrane, and it's not antigenic. It looks like this. Before this was done, this whole entire plate was red. The red area is sheep's blood. The little dots you're seeing here are the bacteria growing, causing the hemolysis of the sheep's red blood cells around it. A couple other things produced by the, um, the strep bacteria. One of them is hyaluronidase, known as spreading factor. And I think hyaluronidase sounds like mayonnaise, which you spread. Um, it breaks down hyaluronic acid found on the host connective tissue. There's four immunologically distinct DNAs, A, B, C, and D, which degrade DNA. We have streptokinase, which is an enzyme that dissolves clots by converting plasminogen to plasmin. And then we have erythrogenic toxin, which um, is elaborated by scarlet fever-associated strains and is responsible for the rash with scarlet fever. So some of the epidemiology, which refers to the study of factors affecting the health and illness of populations. Um, include they're found in the respiratory tract and usually considered a pathogen. Infection is spread by droplets, foodborne, and milkborne. Some of the signs and symptoms that we see with somebody with a strep infection include an upper respiratory infection in a young child. This is usually um, coughing, fever, vomiting, or anorexia. And children over three, severe throat and fever. I know when my child, children were younger, they would get a fever and they would have a really funky smelling breath and sometimes vomit. It wasn't until after they're old enough and able to talk to you to tell you that their throat is actually sore. My youngest daughter would actually get a hoarse sounding voice. She'd sound funny. Impetigo is a type of skin infection where the lesion will crust over. You can get cellulitis, which is in the skin. It's a subcutaneous infection with warm, red, tender area that can become swollen. Or scarlet fever. 
This is a pharyngeal infection that produces erythrogenic toxin, which is responsible for the rash. The rash will begin to peel over the next two weeks. A couple more complications of strep pyogenes, as if what I told you on the previous slide wasn't enough. You can get rheumatic fever, which can occur after the upper respiratory infection. This can actually affect your heart. I have a friend whose son had this, and he had to go every month from age 8 through 16 and get a shot in the buttocks of antibiotics um, just to make sure it didn't um, cause too much heart damage. His um, poor mother said she couldn't even get him to the, um, the parking lot of the cardiologist before he would start crying knowing that he was going to get that painful, that painful shot. Um, glomerulonephritis can occur after pharyngitis or skin infections. That is a kidney inflammation. So it not only can affect your heart, it can affect your kidneys. This is why they're so quick to test for this. It's very easy to test for, and you want to make sure it's treated. It's not something that you, a patient would want to let go. Some of the immunologic uh, manifestations, well, strep pyogenes pr induces the production of several different antibodies. It contains antigenic components and produces antigenic enzymes in which may elicit a specific antibody response. And the majority of patients will show an increase in the concentration of antibody against streptolysin O, which we call ASO or anti-streptolysin O. With an ASO, the titer is measured, and an increase will show recent infection, but can stay increased for up to a year after. Extremely high titers of ASO is a great diagnostic significance. Some of the diagnostic evaluation would include um, cultures. We can do look for antibodies, ASO antibodies, and we can compare acute and convalescent serum collected three weeks apart. Another unfortunate side effect can be streptococcal toxic shock syndrome. The etiology is that group A strep that we've been talking about, it's, um, predominantly M types 1 and 3, which can produce an exotoxin. Some of the immunologic uh, mechanisms we find are exotoxins cause fever and induce shock. M protein can evade the phagocytosis, which makes it very difficult to treat. It's highest in young children and older adults, and more than half have an underlying chronic disease. Some of the signs and symptoms include shock, fever, rash, infected skin, and pain. The lab data that we find is a confirmation of group A strep infections by a fourfold rise against um, the SLO and DNA B. Treat with IV fluids and uh, medications. Usually we give penicillin or some other beta-lactam type of antibiotics. Another type of strep disease is the strep B, group B strep. This is caused by Streptococcus agalactiae. This can cause death in adults and neonates. All moms are tested for this around 34, 34 to 37 weeks of gestation. And if they do come up positive, there's usually no, um, they don't know they have it. And it can actually cause the baby to get really sick with meningitis. So they test all moms, and if they're positive, they just give antibiotics during labor. <clears throat> What can we do to test for these? Well, rapid latex agglutination, anti-streptolysin anti O procedure as well. First one is the quick ELISA immunoassay um, that is done in the doctor's office. But for the anti-streptolysin O, we um, can do uh, look for um, antibodies produced in response to streptolysin O, called streptolysin O antibodies. Or we can use latex particles co coated with streptolysin O. Visible agglutination will occur in the presence of those antibodies. Let's look at a case study really quick. A 19-year-old woman went to the emergency department with swelling and redness in her right leg. She had fallen down while rollerblading and had a number of abrasions on the skin of her leg. She also had a body temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius. The emergency department physician ordered a culture of her leg wound, gave her a prescription for antibiotic, and discharged her. The following evening, she collapsed on the floor and her roommate called 911. Paramedics found an unconscious female with a blood pressure of 80 over 40 and pronounced redness and swelling of her right leg. She was rushed to the emergency department and admitted into the ICU and placed on IV fluids and medications to raise her blood pressure. Is there a relationship between the patient's problem with her leg and her collapse on the floor? What are the symptoms of the condition? And what is the source? Are there any immunological or serological manifestations? Well, the relationship between the problem with her leg and her collapse on the floor could be 
from having a subcut or a cutaneous type of strep infection. The symptoms were the um, fever, which can be caused by group A strep, and um, the rash on the skin. The source is probably a group A type of strep. In any immunologic serological manifestations, we would probably find a positive anti-streptolysin O. This concludes our section on strep.